Our society's dependence on fossil fuels is a dangerous situation. Climate change is not a distant possibility, but a reality right now. The most important goal for the coming decade will be to wean our civilization off fossil fuels as fast as possible. A task that should have been started by previous generations, but is now left up to my generation. I feel like I can't just sit by and watch while climate change destroys our country. And if you look at all the science, it, it says that we have three to five years to act. I've come to understand the implications of the climate crisis, but I've also seen humanity's potential to develop solutions that can overcome that. I think uh, the world on the whole has become very short-term focused. And I think if we were to address the issues that need to be addressed in our world today, uh, we need to be thinking long term and strategically. As we see intense flooding and sea level rise just wipe out islands and countries across the map. And things have plenty of things to do with my time that I would enjoy a hell of a lot more, but I can't think of anything more important. So something I found really interesting here was the way they manage risk. This facility is full of flammable hydrocarbon and so safety is the number one priority. If they find a problem and they think there's a one in a million chance of something going wrong and hurting or killing one person, they'll shut down half the refinery until whatever time it takes to fix it, despite the fact it'll lose millions of dollars. Our best climate scientists are debating whether we're going to have a one in two or a one in four chance of avoiding dangerous climate change. The most important thing you need to understand about climate change is that it can pass the point of no return. If we lose too much Arctic ice or we lose the Amazon or we lose the Siberian permafrost, huge amounts of carbon could be emitted into the atmosphere and take us to four or even six degrees global warming. We can't survive that. This was my first job out of university. I studied chemical engineering and while it's a very diverse degree, oil refining is one of the, the key competencies of my background. When I started working here, it was fascinating. It was you know, what I'd been wanting to do for years and years while I'd been doing my chemical engineering degree. But once I realised that we were so good at managing risk which was right in front of us, but so bad at taking a gamble on the future of our civilization, I had to get out. I have come to realise that my passions and goals about sustainability are fundamentally different from those of the company and that my time could be better spent elsewhere. I wish to resign from my position as process engineer at Mobile Altona Refinery. Regards, Patrick Herbs. So on my last day, I gave a presentation about 30 or 40 staff who showed up on, on climate science, on what I knew about it, and on renewable energy solutions and what we needed to do about it, just to sort of give them a bit of my perspective as to why I was making this choice. Most people were actually quite interested, but I guess they were in a bit of a different sphere of like, yeah, that's a really good idea. Someone should do something about that, where I was like, if no one else is going to do anything, it's going to have to be me. <laughs> In every corner of the globe, there are young people rising up who are concerned about their future, who are doing something about climate change, and that's just incredibly inspiring to me. At the start of 2009, I was still working at the oil refinery. I just got back from a trip to Africa, and there was a big protest going on at Federal Parliament House in Canberra. 
So I actually called in sick to work and jumped on the bus to get up there uh, to you know, join the hundreds and hundreds of people encircling Parliament House to, to tell them we wanted serious action on climate change. So when I left the refinery, I became the project coordinator for the Zero Carbon Australia Stationary Energy Plan, leading a team of volunteers. Beyond Zero Emissions is a group of smart, bright, well-educated young people. They're working together to create the future they want to live and work in. We've got um, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, physicists, and what's really important is each of them coordinates 10, 20, 30 volunteers. I was in the motor racing industry for about 10 years before I started here. After growing up as a bit of a rev head, I decided maybe there's something I could uh, focus my energies on that's more beneficial than driving around, around in circles. And now at BZE, I'm working on the Zero Carbon Australia Transport Plan. So I'm one of the coordinators of the Beyond Zero Emissions Australian Climate Leadership Project. And the aim of that project is to really change Australia's public debate about our contribution to climate change. I've been volunteering at BZE for two years and I work in corporate partnerships. And we're focused on uh, getting interaction from the corporate world and in integrating BZE into corporate social responsibility charters of the corporate world. Pat was absolutely critical to the Station Energy Plan. It was an incredibly ambitious project and Pat came on board fairly close to the start when it was actually very difficult. He actually brought in a number of other young engineers that he, that he knew, which gave us a real boost, and was able to bring together all their work and, and coordinate their work to build a really coherent technical document. So I was the project coordinator and one of the lead authors. I was working with a couple of dozen pro bono researchers, mostly engineers and scientists from all sorts of backgrounds who were donating their time to working on this project. So the Zero Carbon Australia project is one of the most exciting initiatives in the country. I want to congratulate Matthew again and all his team for this extraordinary piece of work. It is very important work. It provides the most comprehensive technical blueprint yet for what our engineers, our scientists, can begin to do for us tomorrow. I commend them for their work. We're deeply indebted to you all. The work already done by BZE is groundbreaking, highly credible because it's science-based and should be embraced by those who are serious about meeting the biggest ecological challenge of our time. Zero Carbon Australia 2020 is exactly the type of positive, rigorous technical analysis that is urgently needed to chart our path to a sustainable future. This is a cutting-edge science-based plan that should be read by every energy decision-maker and politician in Australia. So in the Stationary Energy Plan we showed how it's completely feasible to run Australia off 100% renewable energy using existing technology, wind, solar photovoltaics and solar thermal with storage. The Stationary Energy Plan is a blueprint for running the economy on 100% renewable energy and it can be achieved in as early as a decade in 10 years. I guess the purpose is so the wider community, like the Australian, you know, the Australian people, know that this is a future that they can demand, that they can choose, that they can ask for. That's the more important thing. While the idea of 100% renewable energy sounds pretty out there at first, we've actually done the work to show that it's possible. So it's not just slogans, it's not just ideas, it's actual research. So solar thermal power is one of the few renewable technologies that can provide reliable, dispatchable power it's using mirrors to concentrate the sun's light into heat. That heat's stored in molten salts, and then from that storage is used to generate power 24 hours a day all through the night, allowing it to displace baseload coal. So the great thing about renewable energy is that the more we build it, the cheaper it gets, whilst fossil fuels only get more expensive. So it's expected that within five years, wind and solar photovoltaic could be competitive with conventional electricity. However, we're not gonna get there unless we have more ambitious policies. Climate change is not a 
we're we going to solve it in 20, 30 years type problem. It's the kind of problem we should have solved 20 years ago and it's almost too late today and we basically need to fix it right now. Well, young people are the ones who are brave, willing to take the risks and have the vision to know what's possible. So that's why I think that young people will be and are at the forefront of this social movement. I just think it's more interesting pursuit and, and enjoyable to be able to like change the world in a positive way. And I think the whole team at Beyond Zero Emissions feels the same way. So it's um, yeah, great to be part of something like that. We wanted to show the Australian community at large that a 100% renewable energy future is completely achievable and one that we should all be choosing. So I can actually remember this time when I'd almost finished my four years of my engineering degree. I took this environmental subject in the arts faculty and I was sitting around with this group of art students and one girl piped up with this idea of, we really need 100% renewable energy in 10 years. I was just like, you've got to be kidding. You have no idea what you're talking about. And now I'm the guy who's devoted my entire time to showing how it can be done. <laughs>